What is up guys? This video is the first part in our series on visual odometry, where we first understand the concept and then we will build an example of monocular visual odometry in C++. That's going to be in the later parts, but right now in this video, what we want to do is understand visual odometry conceptually and also mathematically. Simply put, visual odometry is camera-based ego motion estimation of any agent. So let's say you have an agent, a robot or a vehicle, and you have a camera attached to it, and the camera looks at what's happening in front of it, let's say. In that case, what you want to do is you want to estimate the incremental motion change or the motion in general of this agent, of this vehicle or the robot using your camera feed. So this is all about your cameras to get your odometry. So again, it is the process of incrementally estimating the agent's pose using its camera. So the camera pose, which is rigidly attached to the agent by examining the changes the motion induces between two different frames. And this is done in an incremental fashion. So you'll have frame one, then frame two, and you will compare them and find the change based on the motion. And that'll how you will incrementally estimate. This name was inspired by wheel odometry, which incrementally estimates the agent or the robot's motion by integrating the number of wheel turns over time, right? So that happens incrementally. Similarly, in visual odometry, your estimation of odometry or motion happens incrementally. This is different from SLAM. I'm not going to go into SLAM right now, but visual odometry works on local estimation based on the current frame and the previous frame. Before we move forward, I've attached links to two different tutorial papers on visual odometry by Skaramuza and Frondoffel. They are exceptionally good. So if you have a basic understanding of visual odometry, you should definitely read those two tutorial papers. But even if you don't, you should first read those papers and then if you want, come back to this video. So I would say pause this video, go back to these uh, links and look at these two tutorial papers. Now, continuing with visual odometry. Visual odometry has three requirements. One, sufficient environment illumination. Two, a static scene with enough texture to allow apparent motion to be observed. And third, consecutive frames should be captured to ensure sufficient overlap between them so that you can have some common texture. Now, visual odometry is a specific case of structure for motion. In structure for motion, in general, you want to estimate the path, but you also want to estimate the map or the surroundings. But that is again beyond the scope of this video. Now, there are two kinds of visual odometry, monocular and stereo. In monocular, you use only one camera and in stereo, you use two cameras using triangulation. In monocular, the camera pose is computed with 2D image alone, of course. This benefits from small form factor and reduced weight of the cameras. That's really great for stuff like drones. But the disadvantage is that motion can be recovered only up to a scale factor. Actual motion units are determined using some other sensors like IMU. When it comes to stereo, it uses triangulation, as I said, to derive relative motion. But stereo can also degenerate into monocular case if the distance to the scene is much larger than the stereo baseline. Also, due to small form factor of monocular camera, monocular camera has gained a lot more popularity. In monocular visual odometry, you have three different kinds. One, feature-based methods. Second, appearance-based. Third, hybrid methods. Feature-based methods are based on salient and repeatable features that are tracked over frames. Appearance-based methods are based on intensity information of all the pixels in the image or subregions, uh, but this is not robust to occlusion. And the third one is hybrid methods. They are based on a combination of feature-based and appearance-based methods. We are going to focus on feature-based methods in this series. One note on drift, VO or visual odometry works by estimating the camera pose incrementally. Hence, you will have some drift from frame to frame because you're estimating everything incrementally. To solve for this, window bundle adjustment is used but that's beyond the scope. That's not quite like loop closure, but that is used to correct your information or improve your information. Now, we just covered some basic ideas of visual odometry. Again, I hope you've read those papers. We will go into visual odometry mathematically. We will focus only on monocular visual odometry and we will understand the math behind visual odometry which would then lead to us implementing that math in C++ for a kitty dataset. So let's go to the mathematics and understand what visual odometry actually is mathematically. Now that we had a basic introduction of visual odometry, and in our case, we're going to focus on monocular visual odometry. Let's get into the core of this video and understand monocular visual odometry mathematically. That will help us to implement all of the math we're going to see right now in the next part in the series where we will implement monocular visual odometry from scratch in C++ and we will use Kitty dataset to actually run visual odometry and see the results of our implementation. Let's start with formulating the problem statement. 
Given a moving agent that is moving through an environment and taking images with a rigidly attached camera system at discrete time instance k, we wish to find the camera pose at each time instant incrementally. For simplicity, the camera coordinate frame is assumed to be also the agent's coordinate frame, but if it's rigidly attached, you can anyway find the transformation from the camera coordinate frame to any other coordinate frame within the robot. But for now, camera coordinate frame is the same as the agent's coordinate frame. This means that if you can incrementally find the camera pose, you will get the robot's pose at each time instant. That's done incrementally. So that is our problem statement. This is what's given all the images from time instant 0 to n and we want to find out c 0 to n and c is the camera pose. This set of camera poses c contains camera transformation of the camera with respect to the initial coordinate frame at k equals to 0. Okay, so this is our problem statement. Now let's go into the math of this. Two camera poses at adjacent time instance k minus 1 and k are related by this rigid body transformation t of k and k minus 1 where r is your rotation matrix and t is your translation matrix. So r is 4 by 4 and t is 3 by 1. This entire set of t, which looks like this, contains all subsequent motions. Now, the relationship between the camera pose at time instance, let's say n, is related to this t of n. It means that if we know the previous camera pose and the transformation between camera pose k and k minus 1, we can actually get c of n with C0 being the camera pose at k equal to 0, obviously. So if you think about it, Cn can be computed by concatenating all transformations T of k, so this set. That's because each transformation should move the pose forward. The main task in this algorithm is to compute the relative transformation Tk from image ik and ik minus 1, and then multiply it with the previous camera pose, so this equation. This gives the camera pose at time instant k. If we keep doing this incrementally, we have the full set of camera poses C from 0 to n. That's it. That's the problem statement. Essentially, everything boils down to finding Tk. And how do we do that? First, let's look at the block diagram of the visual odometry system that we will implement. This is a general case and you have main components of a visual odometry system. First, you have an image sequence. So all the images. Then you have feature detection then you have feature matching, and then you have motion estimation, and then local optimization like window bundle adjustment. We are not going to implement window bundle adjustment, but that can exist to further improve our system. But we will stop at motion estimation. Now, there's stuff like feature detection and feature matching. We will not go into the details, but just to touch these topics because we are going to use them in code. Feature detection is just finding features in your image or in your image sequence. Feature matching is matching the previous set of features in image k-1, with the new set of features in MHK and finding the overlap. So we want to find what features are still existing in the current one and using those features, we can estimate the motion. There's also something called feature tracking. So instead of finding features in the previous image and in the current image and then matching them, you can find features first and then you can keep tracking them. So you don't find new features all the time. To understand more about these components, read the tutorial papers I shared here and that will clear everything up for you. So here we see a block diagram of our visual odometry system. These are the main components. Let's go deeper and see what are the steps mathematically to get our transformation matrix T because essentially that was the idea, right? We want to get T of K and that will lead us to getting C of K. And that's about it. We keep doing that incrementally and we get all camera poses as time passes. This is your monocular visual odometry algorithm that we will implement in C++ in the next part of this series. But right now, if you see, these are the seven steps. We will implement this on Kitty dataset to see monocular visual odometry in action. Step one is capturing a new frame I of K. So we are at time instant K. Extract and match features between I K minus one and I of K. That's what I said, right? You get the features and you match the features. Now for motion estimation, I said, we want to find T of K. So what we do is we compute the essential matrix for image pair IK minus one and IK. So using the features that we've matched or dragged, once we have our essential matrix, we will decompose it into the rotation matrix and the translation vector. The rotation matrix and the translation vector put together is actually T of K. So that is your transformation matrix that relates C of n minus one and C of n. Now you also have to compute relative scale and rescale T of k accordingly for monocular vision. That's because in monocular vision, you cannot estimate the units. So you will have to use either IMU or something else or for an offline data set like Kitty, we will get that information already from the data set. 
So we will use that later. And the last step, once you have T of K, you can just compute the current camera pose by multiplying the previous camera pose with T of K. That's it. And then you can incrementally do it for the next frame K plus one. So that is all the math behind it. Let me summarize this again before we move on to the next video and implement this. Looking at the different components, first you have feature detection. So for every new image I of K, this step consists of detecting 2D features. There are various methods like sift, serb, or to extract features from images. The next step is feature matching or tracking. For every new image I of K, this step either matches 2D frames obtained from step one or tracks what we got prior to this iteration. That's the difference between feature matching and feature tracking, as I said. Feature matching detects features independently in all images and matches them based on some similarity matrix like descriptors. Feature tracking finds features in one image and tracks them in the next image using a local search technique like correlation. The next step is motion estimation. For the two sets of matched or tracked features, let's say they are FK minus one and FK. So these are the corresponding uh, features from the two images we compute T of K. Since we'll focus on code implementation soon, it's great news that CV library has functions to implement the two subparts of this step. Part one is finding the essential matrix from F of K and F of K minus one using singular value decomposition. In code, we will use the method find essential matrix in C++ CV. Uh, part two is finding the rotation matrix and the translation vector. Hence, you find T of K from your essential matrix. We will use recover pose method in C++. With this, you'll have TK. You multiply it with CK of minus one, that gives you the current pose of the camera. That's about it. The last step that we won't implement is local optimization. This step uses windowed bundle adjustment over the last M poses to iteratively refine this estimate. So when it comes to the mathematical side of things, that's about it. In this video, we had a brief introduction of visual odometry, and then we said we will implement monocular visual odometry. So we had to understand the mathematics behind this. I highly recommend reading those tutorial papers by Scaramuza and Frandoffo. After this, let's go to the next video and implement monocular visual odometry on Kitty dataset in C++. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.